Hello, I'd like to welcome you to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center, where today we are going to dig into the mailbag. Daniel wrote asking if I would do a video about choosing progressive lens card or length. And as always, I said, sure, I can do that. And as always, what I thought was going to be easy turned instead into a month and a half long odyssey. As is so often the case here at the training center, I learned so much while creating this piece. And I'm sure you will too. A quick shout out and thank you to our friends at IOT. As always, I really could not have done this without you. The most important thing I learned should not come as a surprise. When we really dig into this, it turns out once again that what really matters most here is you. It comes down to you understanding lens design, what minimum fitting height really means, how to choose the right lens order frame combination, and your ability to take great measurements. This week, I am going to do something that I have never done before. I am going to help you see into the future. And I'm going to leave you with two great rule of thumb techniques that will increase your customer satisfaction and greatly decrease the likelihood of a non-adapt or a remake. Daniel's question was specific about choosing corridor length. And, you know, your first thing you're going to think of, well, let's define corridor. Well, that was one of the first things that I learned during this lesson was that you can't. There is no industry accepted definition of a corridor. It means different things to different people. I think we can agree that it's the area of a progressive lens that contains the intermediate power. I would have thought of it probably from the bottom of the distance circle to the top of the near. Some folks may think from center to center. If you actually go to the people that design lenses, they don't actually use the term corridor at all. They like the term progression length. Where in the lens do you pick up 10% of the ad to where in the lens do you pick up 90%? Now, this is another thing that I learned. If I could take that intermediate area, the area that contains the intermediate power and pop it out of the lens as a, a piece, it has flexibility in its position. It is not necessarily at the bottom of the distance. It may be starting at the bottom or the fitting cross. It may start at the prism reference point. It may be long, it may be quite short. Depending on how people read, right to left, left to right, top to bottom, this can actually move a little bit in its position to help aid that. So it's not fixed. Now, if progression length or corridor, if you will, isn't something that we control, what do we control? What matters to us as opticians? Well, what really matters is minimum fitting height. That's kind of everything. And we're gonna talk about that a whole lot. If you open up one of those PAL ID catalogs and you leaf through, and I'm gonna read this, you have lenses with a minimum fitting height of 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. We're gonna call those short corridor lenses and we'll learn when you use those. We have lenses with 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19 minimum fitting heights. Great lens, 18 being the magic number, and we're gonna get into that a whole lot. And then we'll talk about the only times that you use long corridors of 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and believe it or not, there was one out there with a 26. So there is a relationship between minimum fitting height and what we want to call our corridor. That relationship is not fixed. I just said that this can move, it can change, it can shorten, lengthen, widen. It can start here, start there. That depends on the individual lens design. The only thing that's constant is that minimum fitting height. They're related, two different things, closely tied to each other, but that's the one we're concerned about. So I'm gonna wipe the board clean and let's talk some more about minimum fitting height.
Everything that I am about to go over is directly related to minimum fitting height. Now, this is kind of the nuts and bolts of optician stuff, which I cover in great detail on the Optician Works website. This isn't really the place for this, but it's worth touching on it because it is so important. When choosing a frame to match a lens order, there is so much to think about related to minimum fitting height. Shape matters. If you have a frame that cuts in like this nasally, you lose minimum fitting height because your eyes converge when you go in to read. You, you lose that. Okay? Bad shape, not good. Shape matters. PDs matter. If you've got a narrow little John PD of 58, I lose minimum fitting height. If Mr. Pumpkinhead comes in with a 68, he gains minimum fitting height. All stuff you need to know, be looking for, thinking about. Your customer's nose matters. If they've got a great big hunk and schnoz and it's sitting here, it's gonna push that lens up and they are going to lose minimum fitting height. If they've got a petite little button nose, that frame is gonna drop down and they will gain minimum fitting height. Same frame, could be the same exact lens order, will work for one person, won't work for another. All good optician stuff you need to be thinking about. Vertex matters. How far does the frame sit from their face, from their eye? It's called the old keyhole effect. You go to an old fashioned keyhole, the closer you got to it, the more you could see on the other side. Works much the same way in a progressive. Minimum fitting height assures that you're not going to get your progression length of 10% to 90%. Minimum fitting height makes sure that when you put that progressive lens up in front of your person, that they are going to get the full distance power, everything that's required to see off in the distance to their full 100% ad power. Would it work there? No, it wouldn't. I'm cutting it away. No good. I'd have to choose a lens with a shorter minimum fitting height. If I move it out, I go from my 58 to 58, 59, 60, 61. I just make it. It's all there. Mr. Pumpkinhead, beautiful. All the room in the world. I have got to have my complete, utter, full distance power, and I must reach that full 100% bottom of the ad circle for a progressive lens to work correctly. Fail to take any of that into account, you're gonna have a lens that doesn't work. So super duper important stuff. If you're not sure about this, then hit the website. And let's talk about choosing a specific minimum fitting height. A little bit more of great opticianry stuff. We don't choose corridors, we choose our fitting height. You have pre-adjusted your frame. You have taken a careful monocular PD. You've chosen a frame that has a great shape to fit everything in. You've made sure that it fits on their nose right and the frame is perfect this way. You've made sure the vertex looks good. Now it's time to take your fitting height and you've got good posture and your arm is just right and you've got your pen and you dot the center of your pupil, you take out your PD stick and you measure from the center of their pupil down to the lowest point in the frame. You've got 17 millimeters, you're good to go. This person, however, you take out your PD stick, you measure, you get 12. You're back to the drawing board, back to the frame board. You have to choose another frame. And you're saying to yourself, well, why don't I just choose a lens with a minimum fitting height of 12? Well, that is where we're going, okay? Now, there's an interesting piece to this. If I took this person and I had a fitting height of 17, I would choose a lens with a minimum fitting height of 17. Bear with me for a second. If it was 18, I would choose an 18. If I took this fitting height and I got 19, I would choose a lens with a minimum fitting height of 18. Bear with me, we'll get there in a second. If I took it and I got 20, I'd choose a lens with a minimum fitting height of 18. Let's get to that. When we talk about MFH, minimum fitting height, MFH, when it means something else. When would you choose a lens designed with a short fitting height. 
Short, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. When? Never. <laughs> okay? You are setting yourself up for failure in the future. If you have someone come in, they just turned 40, they come in and they have their first lens order with an ad power, it's a one, it's a 125. Their eye still has a full one and a half, 175 of accommodative power left. Look, you can throw anything at them. You can put on bifocal contact lenses and it'll work. It'll work great. Huh. But then guess what? Five years later, they walk in and that 125 is now a 250. Same exact frame, same distance lens powers. Their ad has gone up. You make that pair of glasses and they can't see squat out of them. They're moving their head. They're got these don't work. They're throwing them down in front of you. They're on Yelp complaining that you don't know what you're doing. You are setting yourself up for failure in the future. You know, if you must, you must. I mean, if your boss is standing over you and the woman wants to spend $1,000 on the short corridor frame that she loves, I guess you do it. But that's, that's up to you. That's an optician thing that you have to decide. You have to learn to say no. The thing is, you're probably sitting there thinking, what on earth is he even talking about? Because you know what? It doesn't really matter in 2019. Glasses are huge right now. You can use 15, 16, 17, 18, 19s all day long. No problem. Well, if there's one thing we know about fashion is that what comes around goes around. So in five years from now, the new trend will probably be like micro frames and you're not going to be able to use a progressive lens at all in those. So anyway, you know, real quick, you know, short corridors, they exist. If you have to use them, you have to. Uh, right now, it doesn't matter so much, but stay out of the 10s, 11s, 12s, 13s, and 14 minimum fitting height lenses. As I like to say, don't say I didn't warn you. So if short is not the way to go, what is the perfect thing? Well, remember when I said I was going to use MFH to mean something else? Well, I went to IOT and I went to somebody who actually designs progressive lenses. Right? They don't sell them. I didn't go to an optician. I didn't go to an optician educator. Okay. I went to somebody who designs progressive lenses. And I said, if you were working with your mom, your friend, your father, your husband, get it, MFH, what would you look for in a lens frame combination? What did they say? A lens designed around a minimum fitting height of 18. Not a perfect relationship, as I mentioned, but if you had a minimum fitting height of 18, you would have a corridor length or a progression length of roughly 14 millimeters. If I spread my add power, my intermediate power in that 14 millimeter progression length, it is a very comfortable lens to wear. You will have good adaptation, very few remakes. Most of the time you're gonna put it on and people are gonna be pretty darned happy. Even if the add power is starting to creep up. As add power increases, of course, you have less room to squeeze more power in. So it's a great combination, 18, roughly 14, but that, of course, is not a perfect correlation. So that is our rule number one. Always go for 18 for the new wearer. Yes, if you pull down the frame and she loves it and you do your dot and you measure and you get 17, you're going to be okay. Choose a lens with a minimum fitting height of 17, 16, 15 if you absolutely have to, and 19 would certainly be okay too. Okay. Good. Now, long corridor or lenses designed around a fitting height that's quite high, 20, 21, 22, and up. When do you use those? Well, rule number two, Previous wearer is now in a 20, a 21, a 22, 23. 
How do you know that? Well, you have to know your PAL ID catalog. You know how to use that, find out exactly what lens you have, make, model, material, everything, design, make sure you've got the model one point whatever, and just look it up and see what that lens was designed around. If your customer is wearing a longer fitting height lens, leave them in it, okay? What do we call a remake? A non-adapt, right? You're asking people to adapt to change, which doesn't work very well, as we all know. So leave them in what they're wearing. Now, what about the reverse of that? What if they come to you and you find out they're in a 10? Uh -oh. All right. Wean them about two millimeters each year over time. If you try to jump from a 10 to an 18, you will have a non-adapt. You're asking them to adapt to an entirely new style lens. It is not going to work. Again, throwing them down in front of you and saying, these don't work, okay? Go from 10 with that they're in, new pair 12, couple of years, 14, 16, wean them towards that 18 that you need to have a lens that's comfortable, easy to wear, and they're gonna love. Now, what about Mr. Pumpkinhead? He comes in and he has a frame with a minimum fitting height of a 32. <laughs> and you would think, oh, I want the lens with the longest minimum fitting height. No, no, perfect. Even though you have all that room, use a lens with a minimum fitting height of 18. Again, why? Because spreading your intermediate zone over 14 millimeters is very comfortable. It's a good amount of room to spread things out for smooth transition, good head movement, comfortable lens. Do it, your life is gonna be so much easier. Well, I think we, I think we can call it a day. As always, thank you so much for watching. I can't believe that you didn't learn something from this lesson. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there. Hit the like button, leave me a comment. And as always, make sure that every uncut progressive lens in your optical world, short corridor or long, comes from Laramie K. I'll see you again next week.